Welcome to the 33rd talk in a series of 40 which focuses on Genesis, the first three chapters. Now that's a lot of numbers to take in and I'm going to give you two more. 3.15. Genesis 3 and verse 15. We've had the fall of Adam and Eve. We've had God's pronouncement of judgment and the curse. And embedded within that, we have God addressing the serpent, which is representative of the devil. And in chapter 3 and verse 15, God says this to the serpent. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. I'll put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. So in these words, God is saying that the seed of woman, ultimately, that will be Jesus, will be engaged in a climactic battle with the serpent, the devil. And that will be at the end of an increasingly period, increasing period of antagonism reaching this climax in which there will be a decisive cosmic battle where Jesus is wounded, he suffered, but the devil's head is crushed. It's a fatal blow to Satan. Now that all sounds like some fanciful retelling of an extract from maybe Narnia, C.S. Lewis's Narnia, or some of Tolkien's writings. Now, no wonder. Both C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien were Christians, and they used to meet weekly um, over a pint of beer, the best bitter, at the Eagle and Child pub in Oxford. And when they met, they would exchange draft copies of their latest writings. So Lord of the Rings and the Hobbits for Tolkien and his other writings, and C.S. Lewis's The Narnia series. And they encapsulated in those books something of this feel of cosmic battle. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, just before his crucifixion, he declared this. Now the prince of this world, that's the devil, the prince of this world will be driven out. But I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said this to show the kind of death that he was going to die. So Jesus links Satan's downfall prince of this world, he's called, links his downfall to his own crucifixion. This is that cosmic battle hinted at, or more than hinted at, outlined in Genesis 3 and verse 15. So whilst it sounds like the writings, the fanciful writings of Lewis or Tolkien, no, this is the real thing. This is a real climactic battle. And Jesus evoked that battle when in John 19, as he was dying on the cross, shouted, Tetelestai! It is finished, it's accomplished. That moment of victory, that cry from the cross, Satan had been defeated. But we still see satanic activity going on, we still see evil manifest in the world. So what was achieved at Calvary was the decisive blow which would inevitably result in the demise of Satan. He is defeated, and whilst he still thrashes about, causing mayhem, the victory belongs to Christ. This oblique prophecy in Genesis 3 and verse 15 is just the first of many that run through the Old Testament. Some are oblique, some are abundantly clear in the clarity and definition of what they give to predicting the coming of Christ and his victorious death at Calvary. The whole direction of travel throughout the New Test uh, Old Testament is towards Christ, his ministry, his death and resurrection. The battle lines were drawn in chapter 3 and verse 15. So something to reflect or discuss. Read again John 19 verse 28 to chapter 20 and verse 9, in the light 
of Genesis 3.15 and see again how this battle victory is fulfilled in the Old Testament prophecies. Thanks for watching and look out for the next talk in the series Genesis, the first three chapters.